Today I'm going to talk about a few rules and conventions we use when we write JavaScript code, and it's very important that you don't get confused about the code that I write inside the developer tool in this episode, because we haven't talked about JavaScript code before, so don't expect that you know what variables and functions are and that sort of thing. So don't get confused about the code, just know that you need to keep these rules in mind as you start learning about these variables and functions and so on in the following lessons. Now the first rule when it comes to JavaScript is that we end a line of code with a semicolon. Now technically, we don't have to end a line of code with semicolon even though most people think we need to inside JavaScript, but it's a really good habit to get used to because most programming languages will require that you end a line of code using semicolons. So I think it's a really good idea you get used to ending a line of code with a semicolon. And just to demonstrate if we were to write document dot body dot inner HTML is equal to a new string that says blah blah blah. Then I'm going to write semicolon at the end of this line of code because I have now finished my statement. And just to test it out, we can click enter. And as you can see, we now have text inside the browser if we were to zoom in so you can see it. There we go. The second rule is not really a rule but more of a convention is that we want to write comments in our code explaining what exactly the code does because in case we take a long break and we need to see the code after a couple of months, then it's a really good idea to write comments so we know exactly what we wrote inside our code. And the way we write comments, at least in one line, is by writing forward slash forward slash and then whatever comment we have inside our code. And when we write a comment, it's just going to get ignored when the code gets parsed inside the browser. So it doesn't actually read the code, it just sees it as a comment and ignores it. Now if we want to write more than one line of code, we can use forward slash multiply multiply forward slash and whatever goes in between the multiplication symbols is going to be part of a comment and we can also go on a new line if you want to and continue the comments like so so if we were to have a piece of code that maybe changed the color of the menu i could then say we have a comment that says this changes the menu color and then we have a comment inside our code now the next thing i'm going to talk about is the fact that javascript is case sensitive meaning that if we were to create something like a variable and call it names and set it equal to Daniel because that is my name and if we were to then grab the variable afterwards by maybe alerting it inside the browser so we want to alert names and then you guys can see we get Daniel inside the alert but if we were to do the same thing and instead alert names with a big end so it's very important that if we name something with a non-capitalized or capitalized letter, that we then continue to reference to it the exact same way we spelled it. And when it comes to naming inside JavaScript, we have a couple of rules that we want to follow when it comes to specific JavaScript elements that we want to name. For example, when we have variables and functions and methods, we don't start out with a capitalized letter. So in the example I wrote va name, we want to start out with a non-capitalized letter. But if I want to include multiple words inside the variable name, such as name list, then I want to start the next word with a capitalized letter. So I want to say name list, like so. And then lastly, we have something called constants, which is a new type of variable we got not long ago. And we name these variables with all caps, meaning that if we were to create a const variable and name it something like, again, names, I need to make sure the names is all capitalized. And don't worry too much about this error I just got here. It's just because we didn't actually declare anything with it. So we can say const name and set it equal to blah, blah, blah. And then you guys can see we don't get any error messages because we need to set something equal to the constant variable. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is the fact that white space inside code doesn't technically matter, but it helps make code easier for us to read as humans. Meaning that if we were to create this line of code here, document dot body dot inner html is equal to blah 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 semicolon and then variable name is equal to daniel and then enter as you can see we don't get any kind of error messages but because everything in here is on one line and there's no spacing there's no next line in between it becomes harder for us as humans to actually understand what exactly is going on inside the code because everything has been written out in one line of code which means that we might mix up the code inside our heads. So even though white space doesn't technically matter for the machine it's really important for us humans to understand what is going on inside the code. Now in the future as we start creating more JavaScript code it's important that we remember some of these rules and conventions we just talked about. 
And again, if you get confused about some of these rules and conventions, you can always come back to the video and watch it again. Now in the next episode, we're going to start talking about variables inside JavaScript, which is something we constantly use when we create JavaScript applications. So it's very important to talk about variables. So hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you guys next time.